Hello and welcome to another skill of the week. Today we are going to be doing relief sculpture and we're going to be making a plate. So I've got my little plate covered with plastic wrap right now. I am using low fire white clay. Okay. And I have pounded out a slab of clay using about probably a large grapefruit sized chunk of clay, pounding it out flat on a bat. And it's probably a quarter inch thick. And I'm going to lay that out on my plate. Okay, and just press it down in. We're going to be building our sculpture from this plate. Okay, so I like to smooth it down the best I can. See that that plastic's not causing any air bubbles there. So that I have a little bit of a rim. And then uh, an easy way to make this so that it's nice and flat all the way around is just to use your thumb and push the clay off the edge so that it makes it pretty uniform. And you can always smooth that more once it becomes a little bit more leather hard, which is just not, not sticky and still a little bit pliable. Okay, so take that off. And then at that point, since it's pressed down to my plate, I can just push this underneath and get it out of the way and kind of just take my finger and go around that outside edge, cleaning up any jagged pieces of clay and just smooth it out. Okay, so I'm just going to show you the basic forms uh, that we're going to be working with because like when you when we're talking about relief sculpture we're talking about something that projects off of a surface so it can be bas relief which is just a low relief like a quarter a quarter is a bas relief sculpture okay because so, it's a flat surface with a little bit of a projection of a sculpture off of it high relief on the other hand is something like this which is i'm extremely inspired by because i love horses and and i love the movement and activity of horses and this one i saw at the art institute of chicago when i was there and it's just absolutely beautiful and i wish i could turn it to the side and show you how beautiful it is but it looks like especially this horse right here is just projecting off of the surface coming right out of the plane of of the flatness behind it and these horses are this horse is overlapped over the top of these horses and you can't see the back legs of these two horses because it's like it's almost as if the horses are appearing and jumping through the picture plane it's just amazing so I'm inspired by that and I'm gonna do kind of a high relief sculpture that projects off uh, farther I, I really love a rearing horse so I'm gonna attempt to do something like that I've not made a lot of relief sculpture so we'll, we'll see how it turns out but you want to be thinking in terms of basic shapes okay we know that this can't be a a pounded out slab of clay stuck on my plate it's not going to be round it's not going to have dimension uh, we need to be thinking about the forms that we see what shape is that that belly shape it's basically like a tube it's a barrel and if it's really a thick area we'll need to hollow it out so it doesn't explode in the kiln okay because you can't have super thick things in the kiln they just don't work and and then of course uh, breaking down the shape of the head we we've got kind of a circle here and then a square here for the end of his nose and then we would put those together uh, the the neck shape okay that's going to be an oval shape starting wide at the bottom and getting narrower at the top okay so we have to think about how those shapes are going to look on a plate okay so i'm going to just take my excess clay here and start to create the area that's going to attach to the plate okay so i'm kind of making a barrel shape to start okay so kind of a cylinder form And this is going to be really rough. I have, I'm not going to uh, perfect it on this video. Okay, but I got to think about the size that I need, okay, um, to create the shape that I want for this horse. OK, 
Okay, and I'm going to get a tool here. Okay, I have my needle tool and I have my cleaning tool so that I can cut this the size that I want. Um, and I think I'm going to just cut this in half. I make these videos just really quick and I don't rehearse them a ton of times and I don't film them over and over again. What you see is what you get. It's a first time deal. There are no retakes and things like that. So uh, I kind of just work it out and if it works, it works. If it doesn't, you see my mistakes and, um, and I kind of try to work with them. So I'm kind of thinking about, okay, how is this horse shaped? Where is it going? How much do I want uh, on here? Does it need to be bigger? You know, I just constantly asking myself those questions. So I'm thinking right there is going to be pretty good, but it's a super thick chunk of clay. So I'm going to take out this middle part. And I really, I should have a loop tool, but my loop tools are over there. and I'm not going to get it out. So I'm going to just kind of scoop this out. You can scoop it out with your fingers if you need to. Okay. It might make it a little bit more misshapen but I can always reshape it as I get there. Okay, so I've made it kind of hollow so that it's not going to um, be too thick to, to handle the kiln. Okay, and then that kind of widens it out, which I'm glad because I like, I like that it's uh, got kind of a more of a belly shape now. And I'm going to hatch this area that's going to attach to my plate. And, you know, you can slip it if you want, but really, I'm just going to hatch it because it's good enough. Because um, I'm going to be pressing down on it a lot to get it to attach. And I'm going to be shaping it quite a bit. Uh, I like to kind of just play with it as I go and not do tons and tons of planning because... Uh, that's just the way I am. Okay, so I've got it attached. You know, it doesn't look like much. It's just a shape, okay? But, uh, but it's a cylinder kind of shape. And I still have this piece, and I'm going to kind of create his rump here. And I'm going to break this piece off and round it. Let's see. Okay, attach it there. Scoop out the inside like I did before. Okay. Hatch it where I want to attach it. Hatch to attach. It rhymes. Okay. Attach it to this piece also. Just kind of stick it up against there. And of course I'm going to need to round it. His rump is rounded, okay? Right now, it's just looking very cylindrical. It's not looking like it has much shape. I can add more clay to it, like right here. His rump is, is wider. It's got a hip bone there. So I have to think about how that shape is. Okay, and you can, you can smooth things as you go. You can put water on it if you need to. Uh, but keep in mind, the more water you add, the harder it can become to uh, manipulate the clay because it, it gets kind of just sloppy feeling. Okay, so that's what I have so far. Okay, not much of a shape, but I'm trying to think about, okay, that basic cylindrical shape of his body coming up. And the belly part... Okay, if I go this way, the belly part is sticking out a little bit. Now I'm seeing an indentation here. And I'm glad I laid it there because I don't want that indentation there. I might need to add a little clay to that. If I push too hard on it, it could uh, collapse because I do have it um, carved out on the inside. But I can always add a little clay to that if I need to. And so that's, this belly shape is the shape of my horse's belly as it would come out away from uh, the projection. Okay, and then his rump down here. And, and thinking about that hip, okay, I got the barrel of the belly, 
So I'm just going to kind of give an indentation right there. I wish I could uh, do this video right on top of it. It's kind of difficult. So you're seeing the idea of, pro of these projecting forms. Okay, uh, I'm going to try and get a little bit more on there um, so you can see maybe his neck. Okay, I've got this piece of clay that I can think about. His neck is going to go here. His shoulder is going to go here. Um, so just adding pieces of clay to create the pieces, the areas that you need that are this horse's body. Okay, and I might, I'm going to work with that side a little bit more because I really want to get his neck on there first, thinking about shape. Making a little hollow piece. Now, you might think, well, you know, you've created this hollow piece in there, so what's going to happen, you know, if I leave it like this once I'm done is <laughs> my it's going to explode anyway because as you well know steam is going to build up inside of here as it is uh, going through the firing process and if there's no place for that steam to go it's going to escape somehow by blowing a hole through something so I will poke strategic holes into this once it's complete so that it won't you know it'll have like steam holes for the air to escape Okay, so let's see. Thinking about the shape here. Cutting that piece off a little bit. And I might need to add more. In fact, I know I'll need to add more to it, but I'm going to just get this shape put on here. It's kind of a triangular shape. I know I'm going to need more clay for the actual neck part because like we see with this horse's neck, okay, it comes out and then comes back into the chest area. Okay, So I know I'm going to need to do that. I'm just getting basic forms on here right now. And I'm going to need to add some clay to my gap there. And my clay is wet enough that I'm not going to have a problem adding the clay without hatching that as long as I smooth it in really well. Okay. So yeah, this is really, really uh, narrow right now. It's really too narrow for a neck. So I'm going to be adding clay to that. So, and I, this way I can think about the shape of my horse's neck. It comes out and then it comes down into the shoulder. So I'm going to add clay to this side, but I always need to hatch it to attach it. Anytime you need to add clay, unless it's like super wet or something, you need to hatch your clay. Okay, and I need that neck to be shaped a certain way. So I might need to manipulate that a little bit so that it's maybe in, coming up in an S curve just a little bit right there. I'm I'm keep looking back and forth at my drawing. That's why I'm kind of thinking. Sometimes I'm quiet. Okay, I need to push that shoulder this way a little bit. And because of where the neck is, I need to bring some clay in here. So this might get quite a bit more clay added to it and then holes poked. And I can even poke them through the back so that um, they won't be noticeable on the front. Although we're going to paint it and, and that kind of thing and it's not going to be super noticeable anyway. Okay. Just uh, looking at my proportions, trying to think about how that horse's body is put together. Okay, not much happening yet. Okay, got the rump, the body here, the neck. Hopefully it'll be more recognizable when we start to see the head. Okay. Cutting that in half. Thinking about where that might lie. That's his jawbone. Clay underneath that. So I'm going to just start thinking about adding clay to create the shape of that head. 
and I'm going to have to add clay to the neck area, obviously, because um, right here I don't have anything. I'm just starting with the jawbone. And this is really, really thick. So once I get that on there, I can scoop from the top and hollow that out a little bit. I just needed to have something to support it. Some more of my clay here and oh that's nice and wet that's great okay so adding more clay here around the top so I'm still trying to build that jawbone without having the top of the head done yet so I'm just building little pieces at a time thinking about how that head is shaped. Okay, it's not a head yet, obviously. This is the jawbone, okay? So, let me get a little more put on here so you can see it a little bit better. It's really rough right now, but you can start to see the shape of the horse's head coming out. Okay. Really, really rough. But it's okay to have it rough for a while because you're just trying to get you're just trying to get the shapes. Okay? And we're just keeping it really basic. Now you can see there's space underneath because that nose is not going to be taking up a lot of space. Um, and I'm probably going to scoop some of it away here because I'm looking at this, okay? And I'm trying to see the shape of the head this way. And I can use this as reference too uh, because I can really see the front of that head and how it's shaped uh, so that I can see what my three-quarter view would look like from this direction, looking directly at it. And then using my tool to get down into the side a little bit so that I can make his head project off the surface and actually look like it's going back into his neck. Okay. All right, that's a little bit better. Okay, so see the shape here? It's starting to come together. Okay, and I can always add the details like his uh, ears and things like that later. Right now I want to get uh, the more essential forms, the larger forms, because they're the more difficult ones to do, and you don't want to be working on a detail before you get larger elements done or else those things break off and then you get frustrated and boy it, there's nothing worse than having pieces breaking off of your project and you can't get things to come together because pieces keep breaking off and that's all you're concentrating on um, so you need to be thinking about just the larger images first okay so I'm right now I'm kind of shaping um, because I think his neck is too short. So, and maybe his torso is a little long, so I might just bring this neck down into his torso a little bit and then build his chest up from there. So, yeah, bring his neck down here. So see, this is just, for me, it's a work in progress. You don't have to have everything perfect to start. You just have to see it a little at a time, see what you need to do, and start putting it together. Okay? As my, as my uncle would say, who used to carve ducks, oh my goodness, people would say, how in the world did you, do you carve such beautiful ducks? And he'd say, I start with a piece of, a block of wood, and I carve everything away that isn't a duck. 
Now it might seem really simple, but um, Michelangelo kind of had that same mentality. He uh, he said that there was there was a specific sculpture in each thing that he made, and he would just listen to the marble basically, and carve away whatever wasn't that sculpture. So, okay, I'm, I'm starting to work on that other shoulder. I might have it just a bit high, so I can just push it down. Okay, now I'm not gonna work on too much more of this form right now because I wanna show you how uh, I would get the legs put on there. That would be a detail though. Uh, don't add spindly little things that aren't going to hold up under your, the, the pushing and pulling of, of this object that you're going to be doing uh, until it can handle it. Okay, so I have to think about how big these legs are going to be according to the size of the head. I'm just right now. I'm just rolling a tube. Now, obviously, ooh, that's skinny and spindly, and it's not going to work um, because the leg will get wider as it's attached to the body. Okay, so. I'm kind of just thinking about shape right now and where it would be attached up into the shoulder. This is kind of the elbow section. Okay. Now, obviously that's really, really basic right now, but I would be adding play to this area. Okay. This area right here to create the thickness of this area. Okay, so just a little at a time. And if your clay dries out, grab some water. You know, add some water to it. It's perfectly all right. In fact, I highly recommend it, but don't add too much. Okay, so you can see this is really spindly right now. It's not going to be holding up on its own. I might have to um, add a plate piece of clay underneath it. So I like to uh, check it out, see what shape we're getting here. Okay, it's starting to come together. It's not exactly what I want yet, but you can see it's kind of the shape that I'm wanting. And he's got a, a knee, so I need to add some clay to make that knee more round. And you know, some, some of these things, they might be better to be built off of the sculpture and then added later, but um, you know it all depends on the methods that you want to use. Okay, right now I, I think that leg is too close to the other leg or of the uh, other part of it, so it's starting to come together. Um, but if I need something to support that, I can just stick a piece of clay under it. Okay, see so that it's supporting that and it won't break off while I'm working on it. Okay, try to keep my area a little bit more clean. And then you want to have something that's about the same size. There we go. And I make them extra long because then I can cut them off as I need to. And then uh, I had talked to the students earlier today about how I was going to make this leg. And I think I am making it so that it's attached to the back. The background right here okay so pushing it in there I did hatch that first area um, attaching it okay tucking this underneath and I'll work with that chest a little bit more and of course the, the shape of the leg but this coming out and then down okay. kind of figure out where I want it and then hatch and attach it. Okay, I'm attaching it here, but I'm probably going to add more clay because I just want it to get attached right now. I'm not worried about the size of it because it's obviously way, way skinny, might even be too long, okay, because um, I'm, I'm looking at it upside down right now. So I'm going to get up so I can see here. There we go. Yeah, boy, is that skinny. <laughs> It's kind of funny. Oh, hold on. I'm getting a 
some one of my things is opening up here and I got to try and close it. There we go. Okay. Um, yeah, it's scrawny. So I would definitely be adding clay to that. I would definitely be, um, making it shorter because I think it's way too long. Um, but so I'm going to just start uh, creating little pieces here to add to it okay. right here. Cause his, Essentially, it's kind of like our thigh for him. I'm going to add some clay to that, make him have a little thicker thigh because he's got spindly little scrawny skeletal legs right now, and I don't want him to make a skeletal horse. So give him a little bit more shape there. And I can always, if I don't like that it's as thick as it is, I can always take it off. Okay. It tapers. Okay, so see, I'm starting to get a little bit of a tapering shape here. Okay. Uh, I don't know if I like how far out the leg is laying, so I might just take it off of there and move it down. Okay. Yeah. And it's the knee is up too high, so I'm going to just move it down a little. Down a little bit more. There we go. I think that's about the right place. More hatching. Now, if you've manipulated the clay a lot and it gets really dry, definitely add some water to it uh, where you've hatched so that it can attach a little bit better. You don't want it popping off of there while you're working on it. Okay. Uh, not real pretty yet. That That's something that, of course, I would add to it add some clay to it, add some dimension to it, but I'm just just showing you basic forms to get started so that you can start building uh, something that will have relief, okay? It will project off of your plate or your base or whatever it is that you're building on, okay? Not professional by any means, but you get the idea of how to make something that's going to project off, have a little bit of roundness. It's not just going to be a slab of clay on another slab of clay. Okay. Now, I haven't added hooves or anything like that. Right now, these are just basic shapes. And he is really long and slender. I think I need to shorten him up a little bit. Um, his neck is a little bit too short. So proportionately, he's not quite right. And I'm going to be need to be working on him a little bit more. Uh, so, But that's basically how you would get started. Okay, and that's that's all I'm going to do for now because this is just an introductory uh, kind of thing and we can talk later about how to get your details in and things like that once I work on it a little bit more. All right, thank you.